Revlon Racing is, is a hobby of mine. I mean, it's my biggest passion in life. I spend you know, most of my time working on the car, thinking about it, you know, looking forward, what can I do, what can we improve. And it all started in my 25 square meter tiny little garage with just me working on it late nights. So it's always been like an unreachable dream to even come here. And I don't think I even dreamt of it in the beginning because it seemed just so far away. So to be able to be here today, um, it's, it's a dream come true. World Time Attack Challenge. As the name suggests, it's the pinnacle time attack event in the world. If you want to prove your worth against the world's fastest teams, the annual event held at Sydney Motorsport Park in Australia is where you need to be. For every team competing in the event, there is a unique story of development and determination. And that is no more true than for Gustav and the Revline Racing Team, whose story starts in Sweden many years ago. So I started with uh, running on track days, um, and to me I really liked the chasing that actual time. Not just competing with other people, but also improving myself as a driver. Um, but since I also always liked tinkering with stuff, learning new stuff, you know, I, I made my own ECU uh, chipsets, etc. early on, started building engines. So it became like a, a dual hobby in that sense, both the driving, but also the development of the car. And when you chase an actual lap time, it's very clear that uh, not only as a driver, but also that the machine is working as it should. In Sweden, Porsches were a popular choice for just about any form of circuit racing, time attack included. The front engine models in particular were popular due to their accessibility and considerably lower purchase price when compared with the rear engine models. I've been developing the car for, for quite some time and especially when we brought in the new aerodynamics package a couple of years ago. But uh, before last season I really wanted to step it up and all develop in all different areas. So for the engine management um, I came in contact with Haltex and you guys and uh, that has really helped us in a, in a lot of ways with controlling the engine. The car's development progressed in leaps and bounds with Revline Racing quickly becoming the country's fastest time attack team. It was then that Gustav decided it was time to have a crack at the world's biggest time attack event. So we thought that we came here with a, a pretty solid car because it has been running like a full season almost in, in Sweden. Uh, we've worked on different types of things, the engine has been working flawless. But uh, since you guys have a dyno here, I always wanted to, to come here before the first test day just to make sure that everything is working properly uh, after the car has been, you know, been shipped for seven or eight weeks. But uh, straight away we ran into new issues on the dyno that we had never seen before. We're quite used to running into issues because that's uh, what always happens when you compete with these type of extreme cars. So everyone was just straight into work, trying to solve it, trying to find ideas. Uh, the health tech guys have been really amazing in assisting us in any type of way. And we spent like six hours on the dyno trying to fiddle with different things. With a number of small issues lingering, the team set about fixing them one by one until they were happy for Alex to hit the track on his first hot lap. The first ever hot lap that Alex did on old tyres, uh, they were from four years old, these tyres actually, and he straight away did a 129. So we took those tyres off, put new tyres on, and went out again and did a 127. So that was effectively his second hot lap ever in this car on this track. So at that time we knew that uh, pace was looking good and we knew that we, with some work during, before the first uh, race day, we knew that we could lower ourselves in a couple of seconds too. Welcome to Sydney Motorsport Park, home of the Yokohama World Time Attack Challenge. Amy, the vibe is incredible, isn't it? It's absolutely electric today.
It's an incredible circuit, Sydney Motorsport Park. This is where one perfect lap is the ultimate goal. I mean, it's huge. I mean, the, the, the level of... Um the high level on the on the top cars, and you see this this long stretch of pit garages. You see all these teams with you know professional, everyone looking the same when you look at the gear, and um, the level is so high. So of course that adds a lot of pressure. And after the second test day, we actually stayed up until 4:30 a.m. working on the setup of the car, and we wanted it to be perfect. And we changed the alignment and doing everything and. It's great to have a pro driver like Alex with us because he was like the main force. He was like, no, this is not good enough. We need to change this. We need to do this and this and that. So we stayed up all night, came back home, slept for less than two hours, and then came into the first race day of World Time Attack. And coming in with the car, seeing all the spectators, the cameras, and you know, you've done new things to the car. You're not sure is that how that's going to pan out. You have hardly slept. And then you know, also know that it's the morning session that really counts. The most difficult part of this track for us is definitely turn one, because you're so deep into the arrow, the car has been pushed down on the ground, and uh, that gives it a specific handling characteristic. With the car ready, Alex went out for the morning pro session and the pressure was on for the World Time Attack rookie. Alex's lap of 1 minute 25.616 seconds put the Revline Racing Team in third outright place on the table. It's such a huge relief and I mean such pure joy almost, yeah you almost you know got tears almost because you've been working for so many thousands of hours for so many years and you come here and you hardly sleep and you're just working trying to do stuff better and improve things. And to be able to go out for Alex to do that one perfect lap, uh, yeah, it was such a relief and such an amazing feeling. So coming to Friday morning, first run on new tires, and uh, it was really good straight away with the setup changes. We got a 125 out of the car, and we still had a lot of boost left uh, to turn up. We were running at 1.4, which is probably just shy of 800 horsepower in the engine. So maybe around 700 at the wheels. So first was the problem with the transponder. So Alex went out, 
did a real, the hot lap, the 125, but we couldn't see it on the on the live timing screen. So we were really, really, you know, scared that this lap that looked really good from the outside would not count. But then finally, when the 125 time popped up on the live timing screen and we saw that we were third outright, <laughs> that was pretty amazing. The team continued to perform minor tweaks to the car in order to prepare it for the big day on Saturday when the boost was getting turned up for another shot at that one perfect lap. So running the car in two different classes, both the Pro-Am and the Pro-Class presents a, a lot of different challenges in different areas. So first, me and Alex have different physical you know, body size, which means that we have to adjust the seat and seat inlays and the belts between each running. The second issue or challenge is that the car builds up a lot of heat in the engine and transmission and everything and you don't really get a chance to cool that down until the next session. So that also puts a lot of extra stress on, on the whole machinery. So we also ran different types of, of wheels and, and, and tires, so we had to change that as well, along with uh, different braking techniques. Because Alex, as a former a Formula driver, left brakes. And that means that we had to use different types of, of downshift blipping settings. So we had to change that as well between the driver sessions. So it's the first time in, in Australia, of course, first time on Sydney Motorsport Park. It's the first time a pro driver, Alex Dennison, drove the track. It's the first time on the Yokohama tires, the first time on this type of fuel. So it's a lot of unknowns in this area. And it's the first time we ever run on a track with these type of high speed corners as we see in, in turn one at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. With the car sorted, Gustav was feeling good for his Saturday morning Pro-Am session. But a few corners into the lap, the engine started misfiring. Forcing him to back off and keep the revs down. He still managed a 1 minute 32 second lap and the team was confident they could get the misfire fixed and have the car ready for Alex to do a full attack lap in the morning pro session. We did a couple of changes with spark plugs and other stuff that we thought would, would help the misfire. So Alex went out in the first uh, pro session, new, belt, new sets of tires on, the boost turned up. I mean, this was the time that the lap was supposed to be. But unfortunately, the engine started misfire again. So when he came back into the pit, we looked at all the data, uh, looked at you know, the engine, the, um, every sensor, and we realized that we probably needed to change the head gasket at this point. So the clock was now around um, 10.30, and we took the decision, okay, let's do the, uh, the head gasket swap. Everyone just started working on the car. I think we had like 14 hands at the car at some point. Uh, we should also remember that usually it's just me and Edwin working on the car, right? So the other guys, fantastic guys, but they don't have the experience with this engine. But everyone just did what they could. We were working really hard and I think we changed the head gasket in the pit during pit walk. And I think we got it done in just a couple of hours. So that to me was a fantastic effort from the whole team. So we got it up, started running, seemed fine. Alex went out in the second pro session, and at this time of day, it was really hot, so it was not really a good time to set a proper lap. So he then went out just to do uh, some system checks, and the engine was running really, really fine. He tested some overboost button that we added on the steering wheel, and we saw in the log files close to 1,000 horsepower on the main straight. So the car was now working perfect, and it was time for me to do my very last chance in the pro -Ams class to go out and do a, a full proper lap. Been up against it a little bit. We saw you grinding on some parts in the uh, in the garage before. Tell us a little bit about what you got up to. Yeah. So what happened this morning? Early in the morning, I did the first program session. Uh, everything felt really good until I stepped on it, and then I realized that the engine was misfiring heavily about 5,000 RPM. So I did my only attack lap this morning with uh, just half throttle below 5,000 RPMs. Had some tra heavy traffic, and then was a 132 lap. 
So I'm, I'm confident that we can do, I can do a lot better behind the wheel. Uh, then we changed some stuff. So when Alex drove in the Pro Session, the first one, uh, we still realized that no, the engine is, is misfiring on different cylinders. So we thought that the head gasket had gone. So what happened is what we Yes, so we removed the head, and the boys did a fantastic job. So we replaced the head gasket and machined some little parts with an angle grinder uh, in a couple of hours. And uh, Alex did now, he went out to do a system check to make sure that every engine is running fine, and just uh, take some data logs because we also changed. So, uh, yeah, let's look at the data now, and hopefully the engine is working fine, and then I'm going out into the next program session and give it a go. Gustav went out on the medium boost setting, ready to give it his best. This was his last chance to lay down his best lap in Pro-Am. So I went out. So this was my very last chance to do a proper lap, to place ourselves pretty high in the, in the Pro-Am class. I studied the log files. I had, you know, blocked my mind coming into T1. I said, I'm going to do what Alex did, you know. I had his log file, his video, and I was really pumped to go out and do it. It started good, the lap, but then the car was really, really slippery. I was, you know, trying to hustle the car around the corners in the braking zone. It was skidding all over the place. And I couldn't understand what was happening because I thought I drove really, really good. But the car, yeah, something had happened with the car. And then on the second lap, the engine just died. I had to roll to the side. Uh, the marshal said there was oil under the engine. Um, so we towed the car back to the pits. Everyone started looking for a loose fitting or something. But it was worse than that. The team quickly found the reason for the oil leak, and it wasn't good. The engine block had a huge crack in it. So we actually had a spare engine with us but we did not have enough time because now it was less than an hour for the shootout. So if this had happened you know, late on Friday, we definitely would have run on Saturday morning because we just switched the engine out, but we didn't have enough time. So then an official came in, asked us, asked us if we were part of the shootout, but we had to say no. But honestly, I, I'm not sad. I didn't feel sad about the engine block at the time. And I haven't had a single thought of, of you know, feeling bad about it. All in all, it's been amazing. And we also got so much support here locally from, from everyone at Haltech and, and also other competitors and, and, and companies. So it's been an amazing journey, really, really. Revline Racing finished the event in fourth outright position missing out on the podium by just 1.8 seconds. When you consider that the team travelled to the other side of the world for their first ever World Time Attack outing, an event that they had never been to before, held at a track that they had never driven, in a car that wasn't performing to its full potential, and had only ever been run on slick tyres and in a vastly different environment, to go and do a 1 minute 25.616 second lap at Sydney Motorsport Park is a massive achievement and one that Haltech is extremely proud to have played a part in. As Gustav and the team were getting ready to fly back to Sweden, there was only one more question left to ask. No, <laughs> I'm not going to put a barrier at it, no. <laughs>